Good morning. Good morning. We welcome everyone to the divine service. Today is the second Sunday after Pentecost. Oh, my turn? Okay. <laughs> Good morning. <clears throat> we welcome everyone to uh, the Lord's house this day. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we rejoice to be glad in it, don't we? Okay, Lutherans, wake up. It's 8 o'clock. All right. <clears throat> First off, uh, we want to give our heartfelt condolences to the Farnsworth family. For those of you, uh, just a reminder that the funeral is uh, Friday at 11 o'clock. It will be here, and the luncheon will be uh, following in the gym. <clears throat> Other than that, I don't know of any other announcements. Oh, I think there was one that... Uh, Kathy, you wanted to make, right? About the choir. Yeah. So. Written by uh, my good friend John Ilvis, uh, the late John Ilvisacker. Uh, with that, we certainly begin our worship. Uh, let's greet each other with a word of peace. Our opening hymn is certainly one of the hallmarks of the Reformation. By grace I'm saved, grace alone. Number 566, verses 1 through 4.
Please rise. And we begin this morning in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord. If you, O oh Lord, keep a record of sins, O oh Lord, who call it stand? Since we are gathered to hear God's word, call upon him in prayer and praise, and receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. In the fellowship of this altar, let us first consider our unworthiness and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together, as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God, our Heavenly Father, seeking his grace for the sake of Christ, and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Almighty God, merciful Father, in holy baptism, you declare us to be your children and gather us into your one holy church, in which you daily and richly forgive us our sins and grant us new life through your spirit. Be in our midst, in life our faith, and graciously receive our prayer and praise. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty and most merciful God, you send your Son, Jesus Christ, to seek and save the lost. Graciously open our hearts, our hearts and hear his call, and to follow him by faith, that we may receive him forever in his kingdom. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who live and reign with the one God, now and forever. Amen. The first reading for this morning is taken from Hosea, chapter 5, verses 15, and chapter 6, verse 6. I will return again to my place until they acknowledge their guilt and seek my face and in their distress earnestly seek me. Come, let us return to the Lord, for he has torn us, that he may heal us. He has struck us down, and he will bind us up. After two days, he will revive us. On the third day, he will raise us up, that we may live before him. 
Let us know, let us press on to know the Lord. He is going out in sure as the dawn. He will come to us as the showers, as the spring rains that water the earth. What shall I do with you, O Ephraim? What shall I do with you, O Judah? Your love is like a morning cloud, like the dew that goes early away. Therefore, I have hewn them by the prophets. I have slain them by the words of my mouth, and my judgment go forth as the light. For I desire a steadfast love and no sacrifice, the acknowledge of God rather than burnt offerings. This is the word of the Lord. The epistle reading this morning is taken from Romans chapter 5, verses 6 to 15. For while we were still weak, at the right time, Christ died for the ungodly. For one will scarcely die for a righteous person, though perhaps for a good person one will dare even to die. But God showed his love for us that in while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Since, therefore, we have now been justified by his blood, much more shall be saved by him from the wrath of God. For if while we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son. Much more now that we were reconciled, shall we be saved by his life. More than that, we also rejoice in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received reconciliation. Therefore, just as sin came into the world through one man, and death through sin, and so death spread to all men because all sin. For sin indeed was in the world before the law was given, but sin is not counted where there is no law. Yet death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over those whose sinning was not like the transgression of Adam, who was the type of the one who was to come. But the free gift is not like the trespass, for if many died through one man's trespass, much more have the grace of God. And the free gift by the grace of the one man, Jesus Christ, abounding for many. This is the word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel is written in the ninth chapter of St. Matthew, beginning at the ninth verse. Glory be to thee, O Lord. As Jesus passed on from there, he saw a man called Matthew sitting at a tax booth, and he said to him, Follow me. And he rose and followed him. And as Jesus reclined at the table in the house, behold, many tax collectors and sinners came and were reclining with Jesus and his disciples. And when the Pharisees saw this, they said to his disciples, Why does your teacher eat with tax collectors and sinners? But when he heard it, he said, Those who are well have no need of a physician, but those who are sick. Go and learn what this means. I desire mercy and not sacrifice, for I came not to call the righteous, but sinners. And this is the gospel of our Lord. Praise be to thee, O Christ. Well, we boldly confess our Christian faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. He three days rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven 
and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We continue with hymn number 580, verses 1 through 4. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ. And may that peace be richly multiplied among us all. The text was the epistle reading for today. While we were still weak, Christ died for us. While we were sinners, Christ died for us. While we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son. Three times in very short order, at the beginning of this passage, St. Paul iterates our helplessness, yes, even our hostility to God. If you were God, what would you do? Would you get mad and say, I don't want to have anything to do with him anymore? He'd be justified, wouldn't he? And yet God still died for us in his person of his son, Jesus Christ. I find that utterly amazing, don't you? Just without explanation. We're just going, how did that happen? How does this happen? It is clear that our salvation comes by God alone. Nothing we have to bring to the table, nothing we can contribute to it, it's all by God alone. The last time I checked, God doesn't need my help in the matter. I doubt if he does you either, right? He doesn't need our help in the matter. While we were weak, while we were still sinners, while we were enemies, Christ still dies for us. What is it that makes us so weak? And what is it of Christ's death 
that is so powerful, so wonderful that it, it overcomes eternal death to all and brings eternal life and reconciliation to God. This text, I know it's a long one and you may want to read it on your, on your own at home sometime, but I, I see two questions today that are at the core of this So we ask the question, what is the core of our weakness? And what is it about Jesus' death that so powerfully revives us? St. Paul asserts this mystery. Sin came into the world by one man. That we know. Adam and Eve sinned in the garden, and we've been a part of that ever since. But you say, oh, that little baby that was born, it is so innocent. Really? Last time I checked, my kids cried whenever they were hungry. They were cried when they needed a diaper changed. They were very self-centered, weren't they? It was all about them. It was all about their needs. Certainly not my sleep, nor that of my wife. Sin came into the world by one act of one man, Adam. And that means we all inherit that sin. Even though you and I had not been born at that time, we still inherit that sin. Now the Bible doesn't explain this explicitly, but by an overwhelming number of passages, Adam is the father of all, shares his human nature with us. So we, we have all the attributes of Adam. We have all the attributes of Eve. As they sinned and turned aside from the good to which God called them, human nature became corrupt. And boy, is it corrupt today, right? I mean, how can people go in the streets and just willy-nilly shoot each other without even the, the, the smallest inkling of what it means to take a human life? God's righteousness was despised. It still is today. That's why we're here. That's why we're here to strengthen our resolve to tell the world of God's choices and God's desires and God's righteousness. God pursues sinners and he suffers shame doing so. That's the plight of all mankind, isn't it? Where we pursue sin and we experience shame. That's why David said, I was brought forth in iniquity. St. Paul tells the Ephesian congregation that they were by nature children of wrath like the rest of mankind. Ooh, hurts, doesn't it? It hurts. Scripture testifies about original sin. Remember that from your confirmation days? We all learned about original sin. That which we inherited from generation to generation and which will pass along to generation to generation behind us. That's why the birth of Jesus was so miraculous. For he was born of the Virgin Mary. Adam's nature was bypassed when it comes to Jesus because his birth was from the Holy Spirit. He avoids the corruption that we inherited. He was made like us in every way. He was truly human. And we can go all those passages that said he was hungry, he was cold, he cried. Well, he didn't cry, he he wept. And if you know anything about weeping, it wasn't just a little sniffling of the Kleenex at your nose. It was the wailing and and uh, because of a relationship that was gone.
As sinners, death is our lot. Yes, and it even comes to pastors, too. Death enters the world through sin and spreads like COVID-19 did a couple years ago. We're weak. We have no power of ourselves to keep ourselves alive forever. We are truly sinners to the core. And we are enemies who break God's laws and do not always follow the mandates that God gives us. We choose the party of sin rather than embracing the party of love. We choose the party of sin rather than embracing the party of forgiveness from our God. And the the core of our weakness is our open hostility toward God. And we see that in the world today where God is mocked at every turn from whether it be from Hollywood or from whether it be on Main Street all around the world. We cannot make ourselves clean by what is unclean. Only God can do that. Yet the free gift of salvation is not, as the scripture says, is not like the trespass. Sin, he brought sin into the entire world. When Jesus dies and rises, he did it not for himself, but he did it for us. But how and why does that happen? Adam's fall led to mankind's fall. We see gross evidence of that all over America, all over the world. And since Jesus is truly the only descendant of the Trinity... He brings incorruption to bear on our dying world. He communicates his nature to the world and shows the world what it means to bring this to mankind. He began at our baptism when we received his name, his nature, and his promise of eternal life. We have received reconciliation with our God in the gift of eternity that we will not face, but we will all have to face that last enemy of death. And it doesn't necessarily have to mean for us, but it does for congregations as well. I think I've said on one other occasion, I serve our synod as a reconciler. I go into conflicted congregations where there is gross sin and uh, where it's about ready to explode a congregation and I'll sit down with the parties and try to make peace not because of anything Kent Fuquay does but only solely on the word of God bringing parties to bear around the word and let the word have its way with us so that we can be reconciled to one another and the church can go forth in its mission that's what Emmanuel is all about That's why we exist. We who have been reconciled now go to the world and give that final word and that final spirit of our God so that the world may burst forth with songs of thanksgiving. We've got a new heritage, friends. A new heritage. One born of God. And we wouldn't have it any other way, would we? One born of eternal life. One born with a promise that is rock solid. We are his children. Let's bask in that. Tell the world of it. And live it so that others may see our God and want the same for themselves. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. And now may the peace of God, which far surpasses all understanding, keep our hearts and minds together 
in a sure and certain faith in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We go to the Lord in prayer. O Lord, you strike down and you heal. Though we justly deserve your wrath for our sins, revive us and raise us up that we may live before you. O God, you desire steadfast love and that your people know you. Bless all church workers that your word go forth in abundance. Open ears and hearts to be receptive. Father in heaven, by your grace, Abraham did not weaken in faith, but trusted your promise. Strengthen us all that we may rise above apathy, discouragement, and keep us grounded always in your word. O great physician, Jesus came to heal the sick, and forgive sinners. Hear our prayers on behalf of those who suffer, especially for successful hip replacement for Wilma Mayforth, for those who travel, for Richard, for Matthew, for Pastor Sanabria Sr., and for all who need your presence and comfort. 
We pray for the family of Leroy Dietz and safe passages for the DePaolo family. O oh Lord, you give and you take away. We thank you for the ministry of Pastor Farnsworth. He now has received the promise of what he believed, what he lived, and what he preached. Comfort Tammy and the family with the words of Jesus who said, Because I live, you shall live also. Keep them closely to your heart. Feed us now, O God, on the body and blood of Jesus, that we may go forth strengthened to serve and share your love. We ask all of this in the name and for the sake of our Lord and Savior Jesus. Amen. And now in the words of Jesus, we are bold to pray as we rise to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who on this day overcame death and the grave and by his glorious resurrection open to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and singing. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of all creation, for you have had mercy on us and given your only begotten Son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup, and after he had spoken a prayer of thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of it. This cup is the new covenant in my blood, poured out for many for the forgiveness of all of your sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And the peace of the Lord be with you always.
We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift, and we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. And the Lord now look on each of you with his favor and give you his peace. Amen. Our closing hymn is 524, verses 1 and 3. Right now, I want to invite one of our partners from Lutheran Services of Florida, Ross Dietrich, who has a presentation to make, and uh, I'm sure it's going to come as a surprise. won't be a surprise to any of you, but it'll be a surprise nonetheless. Ross, welcome. Welcome to Emmanuel. Good morning. Thank you, Pastor. Well, I'm grateful for my time here with you this morning. Thank you. My name is Ross Dietrich. I'm the Director of Development with Lutheran Services Florida. We are a statewide nonprofit dedicated to bringing God's healing hope and help to people in need. We serve at-risk children uh, and families, those dealing with substance abuse, mental health issues, um, the oppressed, the abused, elderly, refugees. And uh, we do all of this in the name of Jesus Christ and under the banner of Lutheranism. And so I hope you take some pride in that fact that we are serving and uh, that many of our clients actually don't even call us Lutheran Services Florida or LSF, which is what we use for short. They just call us Lutherans or Lutherano uh, for the uh, refugees that we serve. And so um, you may have heard of us more recently, though, because... As you walked by and came into the sanctuary, there's a box in the back, and you guys have packed that box out with shoes for the children that we serve who are at risk of abuse and neglect in the child welfare system here in the Tampa Bay area. So one of the reasons I'm here this morning is to thank you. From the bottom of my heart, thank you for serving the kids that we serve, uh, the foster kids, those kids who are uh, dealing with trauma and neglect at home. Uh, We are wrapping around them together and supporting and loving them in the name of Jesus Christ. So thank you very much for your assistance. I'm going to take those with me today. And, uh, you know, it, it is the support of individuals and churches that is critical for helping us Uh, serve the most vulnerable Floridians. This includes uh, Nikki. I want to tell you about Nikki. She came, uh, she was 15 when she came to our group home, and she was not even 100 pounds. This is a a little girl. She was under five foot tall, but she was a spitfire. She was, actually, she was, she was angry. She was hard to deal with. She was quick to fly off the handle. She was um, aggressive, And so it didn't take us long to figure out why she was a victim of abuse in her life, various forms of abuse. And so she came into our group home and acted out of that trauma and abuse in her life. And so we have great staff. And at first, she butted heads with them, right? But over time, as they poured out the love of Christ and unconditional love into her, 
we saw transformation, an amazing transformation. Uh, she started to heal. She started to get straight A's. She blossomed as an artist. She developed healthy new friendships. And actually in the home, she became a leader helping to transform other girls that were staying there. And so this is the kind of work that you support when you support LSF. And um, we're grateful for your church and the, the support that you give us with our shoe drive. And as you came in, you were handed a brochure. Um, should you feel led to support us directly, there are ways to do that in the brochure, including a built-in envelope that you could make a gift. And so um, thank you for all that you are and all that you do for your community. And so there's another reason I'm here today, though. And this is where we might get in trouble. But it's a good reason. So we're doing what we call the Good Samaritan Initiative. And this is what we've done is we've asked churches around the region to nominate people from their congregation who stand out for their works and service and love for others. They are Good Samaritans. In fact, all of you are Good Samaritans. It was good Lutheran Good Samaritans who planted this church years ago to pour out the love of Christ in this community. And it is all you Good Samaritans who continue to support the ministry of this church. But there is one in particular that we want to honor today. And so this morning it is my privilege in consultation with the leadership of Emmanuel Lutheran Church to honor Neota Dumke. Now, this is well, the reason I say we're going to get in trouble is she had no idea this was coming. And like most good Samaritans, she doesn't do it for the recognition. And she, so she might scald some of the leadership <laughs> afterwards. But let me tell you why she was nominated. Neota is a huge blessing to our church. She takes on so many responsibilities with joy and grace. She has been our Sunday school director and vacation Bible school leader for years now. She helps with the music in the contemporary and Hispanic services and plays the guitar for contemporary service. She makes sure all the people involved in playing or singing for these services have sheet music and sets up practice times. She teaches and leads the children to sing for, for special services. She also manages the coffee cart each week, making sure the coffee is made and cookies and donuts are out. If not enough people contribute, she, she pays for the items herself. She has started a family night one night a month and is always there for that. She manages a meal from Lent and Advent night services and manages that entire meal herself. And we cannot even name all the things that she does for the church. All this along with the many things she does for the community. Her family owns a blueberry farm and she takes very good care of her migrant workers by collecting items they may need. She collects any leftover food from events at the church and drives them to a homeless shelter. She works with Echo and homeless shelters and children's homes. She has the energy of a 30-year-old, and she does everything with joy and with a smile on her face. We call her our church angel. I'm out of breath. <laughs> And so be, on behalf of Lutheran Services Florida and Ameris Bank, who is our title sponsor of our Good Samaritan Initiative, I am honored to present this Good Samaritan Award to you, Neota. Thank you for your heart to serve your community. Well done, good and faithful servant. Thank you. All right. Okay, you guys, sit down. <laughs> um, no, the, the only thing I wanted to tell you about is something that was very special in my past that some of you may not know about, and that is many, many years ago in Minnesota, I was a foster mom and uh, had the experience of dealing with these children who have lots of problems inside of themselves. You know, children would rather be home with their biological families, no matter how bad they are, but because of circumstances, they have to be with us, uh, foster homes. The other quick thing I wanted to mention, uh, Lutheran Services of Minnesota, 50 years ago, I got my daughter from Korea. So that was special. And Lutheran Services is a good program. Let's not forget them. Let's really hang in there and support them. 
Thank you. Well, now, as a reminder of the reason why we exist as a church, we speak our vision statement together. Through word and sacrament ministry, we share the love, joy, and peace of Jesus Christ among ourselves and with those around us. Our worship has ended. Our service now begins. Let us go in peace.